Hello. I'm hoping that this works. I don't see live video yet on my YouTube channel, so I'm not sure, guys. Oh, here we go. It is live. Yay! Um, I am just going to wait a few seconds here. Uh, I hope I can do a really great job of this. Yay! Okay. I'm just making sure that it works on the on the front end. Cause I have no clue how to do this. Anyway. Um Hello, welcome to my plant channel. My name is Hania Ray, and I figured I would do a live stream because I've about my seedlings and since I do a ton of seed starting videos, that's a ton of different species or <laughs> genesis of seeds that I can't get through in one video um, and not all of them are super interesting so I just figured it'd be good to loop them all together and kind of show you what my setup is like. Feel free to ask questions. I am trying to monitor the comments while I'm doing this. I would love for any feedback too. This is again my first time doing this so I'm no expert and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just on my cell phone in my living room about to show you guys some seed starting. Um, I guess a few of the species and or genesis that I'll be going over are Denia. I'll be showing my Dioscoria elephant type seed lines that I've had some of them in perlite and other ones in cactus soil. I've got a ton of begonias. I have my Operculicaria dicaris. I have my ant plants, I have bird of paradise, I have roses actually, which is kind of exciting, Jatropha. I will try to link to every seedling that I show in this video, how to start the seedlings below, because blow up is a couple of months later after I've started them. I have to do a lot of repotting too, so you may see some oversized seedlings in really small pots that I'm really upset about because I I'm just so far behind on my planting, but this weekend, what else are you gonna do? So with that being said, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep this up for right now. And um, yeah, just give me a shout out in the comments if there's any questions that you have about seed starting, if you've had any trouble. If start, I would love to know about that. I that people request and I think I've done nearly all of them that people have asked for. There's one, I think bat plants are one that I have not figured out quite yet so still trying to figure those guys out but other than that um, I think I've figured out pretty much everything people have requested so if there's something that you've been struggling with I'd love to know and figure that out or at least try it because you never know what comes up with that. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna flip this over in one second so we can start. Uh, and hopefully I can catch your comments as they're coming in. Uh, I apologize if I don't see it and I will try to pause every five to 10 minutes and see if I've gotten any questions. If not, that's not a big deal. Um, and I'll just keep going. Cool. So I'm gonna turn around and look at these guys first and hello by the way to whoever is in my chat that's really cool of you and these guys are ant plants and this is a and this guy is a hidnophytum for macarum and i actually just repotted these seedlings uh maybe a week ago so they're just settling in and I put a lot of cactus soil and let's see, I left, they started, I started them in sphagnum moss and I'll be sure to link the video below if you're curious. But I started these guys in sphagnum moss and then um, I think there's a lot of pumice and cactus soil and maybe some bark in here. I tried to keep it as loose as possible. I also sprayed them a bit with uh, bug spray. I noticed, I think it was thrips 
on them, which I was kind of surprised about because usually thrips aren't super into succulents, but they loved my ant plants, so I was like upset about that. So and I think this may be the white dots or the residue from the stupid thrips burrowing into the leaf, but we'll see how that works. The hidden phytum for my complaints, though, don't seem to have as much trouble with pests, so that's exciting. And they're putting out some amazing new leaves. Type right now on the text chat. Feel free to ask questions. Cool, okay. So now that I've shown these guys, I wanted to um, move on. Let's see what we have next. So again, this is a south facing window uh, and I'm right on the street so I get all these wonderful cars. Here are my newly sprouted adenia plants and i don't think these are adenia olibonesis olibonensis plants as it says on the card these i think are just adenia uh, carimanthus and i'm going to turn this ac off so you guys can hear me and i got these guys from mesa garden not too long ago and i think they still have some in stock but they just came up right away within a couple of days so they're super fresh and I can't wait to see them. Uh, if you're just joining me, feel free to ask questions in the chat. I'm super open to answering any questions you might have and I'd love to help you guys get started seed starting. But um, just went over my Adenia seeds here. And now um, here is a sad seed failure. This. I think, well, not a total failure. I don't know if you guys can see. There's, here's a green buddy right here. And then I think I saw another guy somewhere else earlier. Oh, maybe it's right here. And I believe these are both Oranga caudata. I could be wrong, so they're palm seeds. And this is just straight, straight coconut coir. So I basically just soaked these guys for a million years in water. I'm feeling more palms under here, so I'm kind of excited. They're just not through the top of the coconut core yet. And then, so it's not too exciting, but you know. And then I just wanted to show, I know I've gotten a number of people asking about Syningia seeds, and I don't know if you can see that, but let's see if it'll focus. I've got a couple of sprouts right here, and these guys are Syningia aggregata and I think I got these from the cactus store the cactus seed store Oop, lost my focus here and no sprouts from this guy over here yet so we'll see this might just not pan out so that is this window and here are my Stefania erectus They've lost some leaves because they also had a thrip battle recently and that was kind of upsetting for me. But they still seem to be putting out their vines, so that's really cool. Um, these aren't seedlings that I've grown. I haven't grown my Stefania rectus from seed, but I did have a number of Stefania rectus seed starting, or sorry, bulb, <laughs> bulb starting videos in case you guys wanna watch those. And I'll be, link, be sure to link those down below if you're interested. And we're gonna come over here so this is like an assortment of plants here. Uh, and let's see what we have. Here is my, one of my Jatropha multifitas, which I did recently. Really pretty leaves. He's only got this one big one. This is actually a dragon cacti, dragon fruit plant that I grew from eating a dragon fruit seed. He's doing fairly well got little baby spines. And then this is my Dr Dracaena plant. Tree, dragon tree. 
Dracaena, and he's also doing fairly well. I probably should water him soon because his soil's a little drier. And let's see. So here's the first two Bird of Paradise guys that I gr grown. And I just recently, hey, thanks so much for the thumbs up. Uh, I just recently um, did a video on these and I, I feel like I rarely see them in Home Depot. Sometimes they're common and other times they're not, but they're very easy to germinate. So if you want a ton of these plants, just know that you don't have to go to a box store and buy them. You can get them fairly easily um, just by germinating them. And I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna put pot. And let's see what else we got. Oh, this is fun. So here are a ton of cycad seeds. Uh, and these guys, if you know what a cardboard palm is, that's what these guys are. Uh, but these are different varieties of them. And I think this is a Velosky right here that you can see the leaf from. I had a ton of stupid fungus gnats and worms on them, so I'm not sure how many will actually come up, but I've at least got a couple. But I'm sort of upset with myself for letting them get really gross. Here's moldy and ready to be thrown away. I don't know if it'll focus, but... And then, let's see. Oh, here are my Elbuca spiralis seeds. Also have a video about how to start them. And what I've noticed is that these guys will tend to put out their little monocot leaves and then dry out, but then send up a new little baby monocot leaf right here. So if you see your initial first leaves start to go yellow, it's not really a big deal, it just happens. Hello for a new person joining my live stream. Um, and these are Dorstenia Fotida seeds. And I'm hoping to do a seed starting video about these guys soon. Let me see if I can find... I just got some seeds from the Russian Federation. Um, <laughs> so I'm hoping to show how I start my Dorsenia seeds. If you're a Codis form lover, these guys are really neat. They have really weird looking flowers. I have not yet gotten them to flower, but I have gotten a bunch to germinate. Maybe not a bunch, but like, a, you know, a handful. And then let's see, who else do I have? Oh yeah, so these are Guatemalan seeds, seedlings. This is a Cassinia miltebranti, I think. I'm not, I can't remember. It's been a little while. But these guys are just really, these are curly locks cactuses, so they'll just keep spiraling outward from from the seed, and this is an elephant bush that is not doing so hot, so I need to figure out how to repot him. <sighs> womp womp. Okay, let's put this guy to the side for just a second. Hold on one second. Ugh. We're gonna show these guys off. Because I'm not totally sure, but... And... They look super cool when they start developing their lobes. They don't have their lobes right now, but they are a cotisform plant, as is my specialty, I guess you could say. And they are growing at quite a clip, so I just leave them in the sun, basically. This is, again, a south-facing window. Hello, whoever is joining us. And they seem to be pretty happy there. I've gotten three to germinate out of maybe seven or eight seeds, so we'll see who all Um, this is a tea plant. I bought some tea plants, or tea seeds. So Camilla Sinesis have not had any luck yet, um, but it might take up to six weeks, I think. So we'll see. Um, I'm not too, <laughs> I don't think they'll actually come up. So that's what happens with seed starting a lot of the time. It's sort of like, you uh, you try seeds, you fail a lot, and then somehow it works, and then you're like, oh, okay, I guess I should just replicate what I did. Um, all right, so now on to my second shelf. Here are 
guys came up right away. I got them from um, Growing Hope Shop on Etsy. And then he's always got pretty fresh seeds, so it's kind of cool because you know when you put them in, they're going to come up. And they definitely need to be repotted. I don't know if I should really show you guys this, but look at that. Just coming straight through the bottom here. He's totally root bound, so I'm going to have to do a lot of repotting later. I've been sort of lazy about it um, just because they, they look so happy in here, you know. They will get the repot treatment soon. And then as I mentioned earlier, roses. I think I just wanted to see if I could start roses from seed and I did. Um, so I'm <laughs> feeling kind of proud about that because I feel like most roses are, are grown from cutting. Um, I wouldn't say that they are like any particularly special species. They're just miniature rose seedlings. So that's kind of cool. Um, but they came up right away. I didn't cold stratify them, which is also interesting because typically you want to cold stratify rose and some vermiculite for, I don't know, like six weeks to a couple months in your fridge. And then you take them out and put them in the soil. These guys I just put right in the soil and it worked. So I don't know what's going on there, but they seem to be totally fine. Uh, and then here, I've just planted some fuchsia and it's supposed to work well indoors. I've never had fuchsia plants indoors, but I've gotten a couple of seeds to come up. So I'm really excited to see what, again, if you're questions or let me know if there's anything you'd want to see me try to grow. This over here, I don't think I've done a video on these guys, but it's a Joshua tree. It's a baby Joshua tree. Um, and I would say a lot of my seeds actually did germinate, but I could not keep them alive and they didn't even dampen off. They just dried out really quickly. So that was a learning experience because I assumed they would like the dryness, but it seems like they needed several leaves coming up first before they got to that point. So if you try Joshua tree seeds, know that they need a lot more humidity than they think they do at the first. Thanks for the heart. Um, and here is a hibiscus plant. I think this is triolina, hibiscus triolina. And here's another triolina. These guys are from South Africa, which is a really fun store. And they have a ton of those as well. Here is an adenium plant. I think this is one of the first guys I planted. He's getting, ooh, he needs to be watered. Yikes. I don't know if you guys can see that. He's a little shriveled in here, um, which is not so great. Okay. <laughs> All of my seed flaws. And then this guy back here is a palm tree, actually. This is a Christmas palm. And I ran out of room for him elsewhere, so I'm just putting him he's got like this crazy fish so I'm just gonna move him up a little bit while I water my adenium plants in front of me here these are all these are all uh coleus seeds so if you're interested in um, really easy growing house plants. I would recommend coleus. These guys, I should probably, um, let them vent out a little bit more, but they seem happy in a lot of humidity. And I think this is that's why the leaves get these to focus. There we go. Uh, yeah, these are like dragon blood or something like that. Something, something crazy and goth that sounded cool. And then these are um, like multicolors. So we'll see what happens. Not too exciting. It's just coleus, but they're a fun plant to just stick into things. And then I, I don't think anyone's come up in here. This is wild ginger in the Americas, but I have not had any luck uh, getting with them. 
fingers all the time, just so that you guys know. It's, um, they don't always work out. And then I just did a video on Streptocarpus uh, and these guys, let's see, Cape Primrose is what they're called. And they are all coming up in here and there's a ton of fungus gnats, which is annoying me. But at least you can see that they look pretty happy in here and that's all that I care about is these little seedlings in here looking pretty happy. So that is, and I'm going to move over, let's see, I had some gardenia seeds, these guys have not come up yet, as you can see, we already did these guys, I just moved them over here briefly. This might be like a seed failure area. This is a refugee area of some Hoyas and succulents that I have no idea where else to put. Let's see. Okay. Sad. Hello, if you're just joining us, feel free to ask questions or um, say hello in the chat if you want to know anything about seeds. We're going to get to the dark purple groovy area now is what I like to call it. And let's see. So here's the first bit of begonias. These are huge experiment. This is just a Cebu blue, just coming down here. And these let's see if I can focus on them a little bit better. There we go. They are a hybrid cane-like begonia and they're super beautiful, but like, Hello and welcome. If you're new here, feel free to ask questions. I'm just going over my begonias if you're interested. So I, as I was explaining, I kind of just leave these guys alone. Um, I was trying to see how tolerant they were, possibly uh, to give them away to people who want to grow mess houseplants. And they seem fairly tolerant if you just let them dry out, so that's kind of cool. I started them from seeds. They're a hybrid cane begonia, but I don't know what the mix is or what they were mixed with. I got them from the American Begonia Society and this is how they turned out, which is kind of cool. But again, I have no idea what their their parents are. Just that they're cane-like and that they've got dots sort of like a Tom Mint. Here's my sad uh, Drosera caponesis. Oh, yay! Hey, Grace, how's it going? And yeah, this is my um, Venus flytrap, and he's uh, gonna send off a flower, so I'm not sure if I, I might cut him off or cut the flower off because I don't uh, want him to spend all his energy doing that. I want him to grow his little traps. Uh, these are more seed failures in here. This is. Um, these were Drosera florista that did not come up and now it's just like Let's see. Here are some more old, old Adenias. Yeah, Grace, good vibes. Yeah, it, I think the light really helps do good vibes. Um, I think I have a link to my lights below or I will have a link to my lights below. Um, if anyone wants these red lights, they definitely help with um, keeping plants from being a little burned or overly stimulated um, or sorry getting their leaves to be way too yellow. This guy is um, so a desert rose and I think again he's not one of my first desert roses never mind um, but he's doing pretty well so I'm just leaving him over here same with this guy behind him, and these guys are super firm, unlike the other guy I just showed who was kind of dying over there. Oops. And now we get to Dioscoria. These are really cute heart-shaped leaves. And this was my Dioscoria experiment, which I think was also below, or, or which I'll link below. 
here's more of them. But I wanted to just Dioscoria plants great. So I'm going to have to repot them too. Um, these were the Dioscoria plants that I put in perlite and they don't seem to be enjoying it anymore or growing quite as well as some of my other ones. It's still very wet in here, so I'm hoping they don't get rotted. Um, how many hours per day, week do you spend? Oof. Um, I would say uh, maybe an hour a day or an hour or two a day, just kind of like looking at all of them and like making sure they're okay. Um, but then, ugh, I have some bad that um, need a lot more care, like calatheas that I've nearly killed. Uh, so I would say I spend several hours on them a week. It really just depends on how much care they need. Um, this, like for example, this beefsteak begonia just kind of keeps doing its thing and I'm like, all right, cool, dude. Um, but all, all the rest of them are like not, um, not that great. Um, me, well, not all the rest of them, but a lot of my um, fussier plants uh, I tend to forget about or try to forget about. Um, um, Impatience tuberosa, which is another cotisiform plant. Um, Madalea cyclophylla. And these guys, I think, were at Mesa Garden which always has really good seeds if you wanted to start your own. They're super easy. They came up within a week. I know I have a ton of little fat plants from them. Let's see. This is, yeah, more Madalia cyclophyllas. This is a cardboard palm. Let's see if I can pull him out into the light. So I think I showed you guys my cycads earlier. you just need to get super fresh cardboard palm seeds. Here's all of my bags of plant care stuff <laughs> that just like I feel like I'm always trying to replenish it and just growing a bunch of stuff all the time. And I'll put them back. More ant plants. If you started the video with me uh, I showed some of my ant plants that I had pulled out and these guys had left in the pot to grow a bit more but I might pull them out soon to, to put in their own individual pots instead of in this little cup. Here are and they smell a bit like um if I had to be honest, uh, it's like lemony dish soap, which is kind of weird. Uh, but whenever I pass by them and I'm just like walking through here, they just smell really gross and silly. Um, moving on behind them. These are my Detrofa podogrica plants and they're actually super beautiful. I'm really loving these leaves. They almost remind me of Stefania leaves. They're really cool veins on top of here. If I can get it to focus. Be careful, so if you can find some Jotropha Podogrica seeds, I would highly, highly recommend it because they kind of just sit here and do nothing. And in the back here, I have another hibiscus plant that's kind of going nuts. Um, he's a little leggy, but I'm kind of just letting him do his thing. And then these are, I want to say Cocinia, Cocinia mildebrandi plants. They will also form a cotarx eventually, but I have not been able to get them to keep their leaves. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. So the cool begonia box. One of the begonia boxes. And the fun thing about the begonia box is that I really don't have to do anything. And do I have a favorite mo low maintenance plant? I have a bunch of favorite <laughs> low maintenance plants. Like, um, I would say, uh, I would say go, f like, it depends on what you want. If you're looking for a plant, but I would honestly, being like the Jotropha podogrica, I like honestly water them maybe once every two weeks and don't really do anything with them. 
Um, and then I just pointed out this is a beefsteak begonia. I rarely water him, maybe like once every couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, it just depends on what types of plants you like. Obviously, succulents and desert plants don't need much attention either. Uh, philodendrons are also a great choice. I didn't really talk about this because it's not the seedling that I'm doing, but this guy I just kind of leave and use for me. Um, yeah, I can give you recommendations. Happy to do so. Um, and here are, so these are the cane-like begonias from the American Begonia Society, and I'm kind of in love with them. They look like little galaxies. Um, if you can see what I mean. So I might, I don't know, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to sell them anytime soon or just leave them in here until they get really big. I, I mean, I haven't figured out selling anyway, so it's not like that's a um, how they look. So I'm kind of scared to get rid of them. Here are Begonia tomentosas. Just pulling them out so you can see the color and how fuzzy they are. They're sort of like little dog ears or something, like puppy ears. Um, I don't know if you can see the texture on there, but they're super soft, almost like peach fuzz on top. And these are, yeah, I'm hoping they grow a little faster, but haven't gotten there yet. my first round of Streptocarpus. And they are growing at quite a clip, so I need to get these out of here soon because they are getting quite bunched up in here and I'm not totally sure. Um, I might lose a couple of them when I'm moving them around, but. All right, now on to the rarer begonia box. And these, by the way, are from um, Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't have an affiliate or I'm not getting money from mentioning them, but they're I grow an avocado. Um, I've actually tried um, and it rotted on me, uh, but I'm, I can probably try again soon. I know a lot of other people have done it and it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, and you just kind of put it over water and it'll grow roots. Um, but I did grow, I managed to grow some lemon trees from seed and I'm, um, uh, I've also grown the dragon fruit, I guess, as well. And I have some lychee seeds that I'm gonna try in a second. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the, um, I'm, I, I love avocado too. Yeah. I get their leaves. They're like really red or like orangey red on top and then like have those green leaves underneath and they look really tropical. Um, Mango trees are also really cool too, if you like mangoes. Um, but avocado seems a little hardier, if I'm being honest. Um, uh, this guy I actually got from B Botanic AZ. Um, and I'm sure you, if you guys are, if you guys know a lot about plants, you know what I'm talking about. But um, he's actually really cool and I'm trying to figure out how to grow him, so I'm just leaving. To remember what species of begonia this is. But super cool looking, I thought, so I was just gonna give give him a shot in here. This is a Tom Mint I've propagated a number of times, this bigger guy, not a seed that I've grown. But then over here are these, these are begonia maculata way tea seeds, so these guys will have the really pretty red undersides eventually. This is Begonia luzonensis, and these guys will have a really cool pattern on their leaves. Begonia negronesis seeds. I don't think you can quite see their pattern yet either, but I'm really excited because they look kind of funky and psychedelic when they get older. It's hard with seeds because it's like, I, I think people have asked me before, oh, my begonias are still green. And it's like, yeah, you gotta wait a while for them to get their spots. Um, it sort of reminds me of um, uh, like getting your wings or something. It's like, well, 
Okay, so now the next begonia box. This is actually a much more mixed box. It's not just big. But, um, these are begonia lucuana. So a little less, um, a little less spotty, but should be vining, I think, eventually. This is actually an anthurium that I grew from seed, which is really exciting. Hello and welcome. If you're new, um, I'm just going through all the seeds that I have growing in my apartment right now. Um, these, this is Anthurium uh, Splendida. Hmm. I will have to remember. Leaves. I don't think it's like a super popular Anthurium in the way that these guys are. These are Crystallinium hybrids and I don't know if you can even like kind of see the start they don't have their telltale white veins yet but you can kind of see them forming the leaf structure that they'll eventually have in there and then um these are Cosinia mildebrandi so there are different caudiciforms in here and these caudiciforms they're I guess they're like cucumber like Fun. This is a ficus ingens here. Oops, sorry, buddy. These are. This is a ficus palmary, if I'm not mistaken. So he'll also have like a little palm bottom. And let's see, more ficus plants, more begonians, more tumens. And then here we have, um, these are my philodendron hope seeds. Um, they've been doing really well in just sphagnum moss for a while. I'm going to have to repot them soon. But a clip as well, so smaller fish tank to put them inside of and let them go crazy in there. Here's another one of these like longer leaved anthuriums that I'm growing from seed. And these are, um, these are philodendron tuxtla seeds. And this guy, hold on, let's see if I can get it to focus. The smaller guy is actually older than the bigger guy, and I cannot get him to keep growing for the life of me, so I don't know what the heck is wrong with him, but... To boost him stuff but we'll see and I think I've gone through these guys okay I do have um, some begonia listatas in here but that's pretty much it let's see they're in the spark corner and I can show you what those look like really quickly oh sorry sorry camera malfunction um, let's see if I can get in here you probably can't see in the dark. So here you go. There's like little tiny begonia seedlings on here. And they're taking a long time to grow. So I'm just kind of letting them do their thing. This was a triolina failure. I have not been successful growing triolina. So if you're watching this and you know how to grow it, go. Please tell me or let me know. Um, if you have any secrets, but, um, I have not been able to do so. All right, so let's close this back up. And then... Final round. I'll start at the top. These are Adenia stylosa seeds. They're very, very rare plants. I'm super excited about them because once they get older, they will have these gorgeous, gorgeous dark red leaves, and they don't have them yet, but I, I just can't wait for them. They're very goth plants, and I'm in love with that. Um, these guys are Pelargoniums, Transvalens, and I got them because I thought they looked kind of cool with this little red ring on the this guy. This guy's a little bit brighter. These are also desert geranium, so they're pretty, pretty dry tolerant, but I'm trying, I'm still trying to figure out the balance. That's why we have 
Um, that's why the leaves are dead in some areas and alive in others because I'm still trying to figure out how much water they need. Here are some Detrofa plants and they look nothing like my Detrofa podogrica, Detrofa multifida. Yeah, uh, so yeah, the boxes, um, they're probably around 95 to 100% humidity. Um, and they don't need to be in them in here. Oops, let's see if it'll focus. I leave them in here because it's just easier. Um, instead of putting it in a baggie, because sometimes I feel like in the baggies, I like accidentally smash the plants if I'm not being careful. Um, meaning like I might drop it or like uh, put something on top of it without noticing. And then, um, uh, yeah, um, some plants do require the humidity, obviously. And that's, um, yeah, it's, uh, I guess it's just like a, a to see which guys prefer to be in the little boxes. I'd want to have um, out. And these guys are actually a prime example. These are um, Begonia draggy seeds and they also turn into codiciforms. So you can see that it's like definitely a crossover, but they for a time were in these boxes and then I took them out and let them starting, let them start to adjust to regular um, room temperature, humidity, and they seem to be doing just fine. So I'm just letting them do their thing now. Um, but at first it was a little dicey. Survive. Brucera fragoroides. Let's see, okay, I guess this is here. And I did a video about them a couple weeks ago, but they have this really beautiful um, incense smelling leaf um, and I can't wait for them to get bigger because they, I guess the bark and the entire plant will kind of smell like incense when you walk by it. So, um, that's really exciting. And especially if you have one growing in your house, it's kind of like a nice surprise to walk by a plant and it smells. Apriculicaria decari. These guys I think are from Southern Africa. And I think that their leaves are so darling, um, but they're also super fat underneath. So they have a caudiciform as well. Um, and I think it's kind of cute once I repotted them, <laughs> but I'm trying to just let them grow out in these bigger pots and then I'll repot them again into something. Um, I think this is just regular soil mix actually, not desert mix. And then here's uh, what I mean about like accidentally smashing a plant. This is a camphora. accidentally hit him and his brand and um, I'm just trying to see if he'll grow some leaves but it's not looking too promising right now so oh, I'm so upset um, so upset these guys I did not grow from seed but here is an Adenia venenata adult plant I think he's about to go dormant so he's losing his leaves and then this is an Adenia glauca, and he's coming out of dormancy, so he's growing his leaves. Um, I think they're supremely confused over here. And these guys are Christmas tree palms, and they are super simple to grow. Um, and I haven't yet seen like the next round of leaves come up yet, but um, I definitely need to repot them again soon too because. Um, I think that they're starting to bind the roots in this um, coconut coir mix. And this is just coconut coir, perlite, and pumice, I believe. And maybe some um, clay balls that I put in here from something else. And here are my other gorgeous begonia draggy plants. Isn't that so stunning? Look at that leaf. It's like almost made of wax or look like that that's probably uh, a sign that they need water and let's see if there's anybody else in here I know I have some um, Shizubasis and Tricata seeds but they don't seem to be doing quite well Phyllis again under seed failures I guess they're not doing poorly poorly but they're not thriving 
I guess I have some green leaves in there. And then last but not least for this. These are uh, Medanilla succulentas. Um, and they seem super happy inside of just pure sphagnum moss, but you can also see they're starting to get a little root bound in here. Um, so I'm not quite sure um, when to repot them and I might have to cut, just cut them out, but they are really loving it. So I kind of am afraid to move them right now. But I do have this like terrarium bowl set up and I was thinking maybe I'll make a, a succulent terrarium in here. I'm not quite sure yet. Gotten to everything. I can give you guys a sneak peek of my back room, but let me know if you have any questions or um, comments or if there's anything you'd like to see me try to grow. I, um, I feel like I have a lot in here and I'm needing more space and I might have to buy another, um, another shelf soon, but, um, yeah, I, I'm like trying to see if I missed anything. There's a lot of, uh, I would say there's a lot of things and maybe they won't ever really turn. But it's kind of, you know, what you expect for seeds. Um, yeah. So thanks so much to the three people that watch this for 40 eight minutes. Um, I'm just going to hang out a little bit longer if anyone has questions. Um, and if not, I will sign off in a couple of minutes. But um, yeah, if you're not following me already on YouTube, please do. Because it's really fun to start seats and have people enjoy doing it. Know, feel free to just email me or write me on any social platform and I'm happy to try to answer it for you. And yeah, if you think of any other seeds you want me to try, just give me a shout out and be like, hey, can you try, I don't know, some, some, uh, guys, help me out here. <laughs> can you try some carnation seeds or something. I don't know. I was trying to think of the lamest plant I could. No plants are lame, but carnations are pretty lame. Okay. Well, I will sign off now. Um, thanks so much for watching and thank you again, um, for your questions and your attention. And I will be back on later this week with another seed starting video. Thanks.